Okay, so dividing a little trickier. I wish I had some fun tricks. I mean, you could confirm the fractions like I did with the multiplying, but don't think that it's better. You know, I guess I'll show you real quick. Uh, 126 out of 100 divided by 12 out of 10. Okay, so that wasn't so bad, but then I got to flip it, of course. Always flip the one on the right. Notice I left the one on the left alone. Flip the one on the right. And these reduce. Okay. Uh, but you notice my denominator is not all like tens. So that's what really made it easy with doing the decimals is that it that denominator just stuck to place value. And um, it's kind of getting outside of the scope of that. So. It just gets uglier from there. So we'll just, we just won't go there. We'll stick with the decimals. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and you, it says 1.26, so that's what I put in first. The first number is the first number that I write down. Then it says divide. That is where I put the divide box. I'm just interpreting as I read it. 1.26, I wrote it down. Then the divide sign, drew the box. Now I'm going to do 1.2. Awesome. Okay, so here's basically the rule. We don't divide by decimals. You can have decimals inside, but you can't have decimals outside. So since this is the tenths place, I'm going to multiply by ten. Okay, so essentially what that's going to do is just move your decimal over one place because every time you multiply by 10 makes it bigger by 10. If you divide by 10, it makes it smaller by 10. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do a little erasing here. Okay, so now I just have 12 because we don't really like the decimals on the outside. It's kind of ugly. And I had moved this decimal over. Okay. Now what I like to do is if I have three numbers inside of the box, I like to have three numbers on top of the box. Okay, so let's just start. I'm just going to go ahead and do the algorithm even though there's some um, probably better ways to do this. So 12 goes into 1. Yeah, I have no groups of 12 in that. So I'm going to go ahead and put a zero up there. Okay. So then zero times 12 is zero. So I subtract zero and I get a one. I know it seems a little lame to be subtracting zero, but I still think it's a good idea. I'm going to bring down that two. Okay, 12 goes into 12 one time. So you notice how all my numbers line up here? Okay, one times 12 is 12, so I subtract 12. Bring down the six. Twelve doesn't go into six, so I have to put a zero up here. So you notice I have three numbers inside of the box, and I have three numbers on top of the box. That's important. Okay, so now um, I need some more numbers, so I'm going to go ahead and throw on another zero. So now I have four numbers under the box, so I'm going to need four numbers on top of the box division box. I'm going to bring that zero right on down. How many times does 12 go into 60? If you're like me, you've memorized it. Otherwise you can do a little pencil work off to the side. 5 times 12 gives me 60. So if I subtract, I get zero. And so the quotient is 1.05.